right, welcome back. We are starting a new week, a new vlog. And I know I'm weeks behind on these vlogs, but is the information that I'm providing you guys sometimes, especially when we're talking numbers and data, sales prices, profit, things like that, I really don't want a lot of that to be uh, shown online until we've actually completed a transaction uh, just for liability purposes privacy uh, a lot of this knowledge in real estate is public knowledge meaning you're going to be able to go to the property appraiser you're going to be able to go see that information but usually you can't see that for a couple weeks after a transaction maybe even a couple months depending on the county or the city that you're dealing with and i'm kicking off my monday morning uh, down here in south venice we had one of our wholesalers uh, reach out to us over the weekend he did pitch us a property and it's a two bedroom, two bath, but it had a carport conversion. So it's now a three bedroom, two bath. And whenever you hear conversion, uh, it's hard to just say yes right off the bat without actually going and looking at the property. The fact that I'm only 30 minutes away from this property, there's no reason I can't go look at the property if I can be given access. And it seems like it's gonna be a property that we are gonna pick up. We did ask him to send us over the contract after I just looked at it. So we are gonna uh, put this one under contract and it will be a property Property that we're going to end up rehabbing. Uh, the property was pitched to us for $120,000 and we're in the 34293 zip code. Now after seeing it, uh, there's no way we would convert that back to a carport. There's no value in that. There's no value probably in converting it over into a full enclosed garage either since it's already a bedroom. So leaving it as a bedroom, it actually ends up raising what that ARV can be on this property. Uh, I don't see any reason that we can't conservative say that we should get 220 for this property pending no market change and if anything maybe that number goes up so we could be looking at something between 220 and 240 but my experience in Venice is, is there's not a huge fluctuation in price difference between the two and three bedrooms and you might be thinking well why is that and the reason being is Venice has typically been uh, more of a retiree area and they're not really gonna need a larger home you know the two bedrooms is enough for them what can be even more valuable is having some decent square footage or on these three bedrooms they can always turn that into an office not to say there's not families living in Venice as this whole area grows and people get pushed out of some of the more popular areas such as Sarasota you know they tend to gravitate and move a little bit further south Venice it is still Sarasota County and it's actually right between Northport and uh, we'll say Nokomis, uh, Osprey area, uh, which is all south of Sarasota. But uh, the way Venice is structured, you got Venice sitting here and you got Northport right next to it. And that is the very Southern County of Sarasota. I told you I'm starting my morning off down here in Venice. Well, this is 35 minutes from my house. Is it inconvenient? No, but I'm gonna make it super convenient and a super good use of my time by having my morning structured around where I'm going to look at a property where I'm going to be so what I did was is I went on the MLS last night and I looked at what other properties are similar to the one I'm going to look at that I can go walk into what active properties may be pending too if you happen to know that agent and can get into the house but what properties are going to be down here that I could go run into and just see so that by the time ours is coming to market and I see these sold sales, I'll be able to have a good comparison. So you can do the same thing by looking at sold properties on your MLS to get your comps. Uh, but again, having my real estate license, it gives me access into other properties. So why not go look at what some of your other, we'll call it competition is at the current moment. So I'm doing that. I just stopped into one house just now. That's a two bedroom, two bath, not as fixed up. They're asking 210 for that one. And it's only been on the market for about a week and a half. Uh, now I am heading to another property. It's listed for $235,000. It's less square footage and it's a two bedroom, two bath. So the fact that it's an even smaller size property, they're asking more and it has not that third bedroom. Well, that's something worth going to look at because if they end up getting that sales price, well, that's even better for us. But what else am I doing down here? Yes, I'm gonna go look at some active properties, but I'm also driving for dollars right now. I highly recommend if you're looking for a cheap 
low cost way, now, I don't know if cheap's the right word, but if you're looking for a low cost way to go find properties that you can direct mail to and, and you have a problem where you don't have a big budget, you need, look at that, look at that glare. What am I doing? I'm taking my phone out. I'm loading up the app that I personally use for driving for dollars, which is Land Glide. But anyways, I have just stopped in front of a house that I wanted to just see, is there an absentee owner here? Is this one occupied? Not that a driving for dollars property has to be unoccupied uh, or an absentee owner to make it a deal, but that's what I'm doing down here. I set up my morning to give me time, to give me a couple hours, to know that I'm gonna be able to drive around here, do some driving for dollars, and also find ourselves another deal where there's not that middleman wholesaler in it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm driving for dollars, and then when I leave from here, I'm gonna be heading right up the interstate. You guys are gonna come along with me. We're gonna go check out our friendship Lake Sarasota Rehab. All right, we're back at Lake Sarasota Rehab. Rehab, rehab. Two thousand twenty-one is the year to just make some big changes and propel myself forward. Uh, we're at a property in an area of uh, Bradenton, uh, Manatee, because this is where we've been doing a lot of our marketing for the past couple weeks. That's been hitting everybody. The good thing about that is sticking to a certain area and not just blasting, you know, three different cities or towns all at once, is that it helps me keep my appointments and my days a little bit more structured. So this property, I was actually driving, I was ending my day yesterday, and I got a call, and this was a postcard lead, and they said that they're uh, they're out of state, they had a property up here that they gave me the price range that they're looking to get for the house. They were able to give me all the details and tell me they're not gonna be in town until the end of January. And that's when I'd be able to come visit them, see the property. Well, I don't wanna wait that long to get something under contract if possible. What I wanna do is get it under contract as soon as I can. What I'm doing is I had an appointment already set up for this morning, actually around the corner from here in the same area. So I was able to run over here look at the outside, just get a feel for the property, and that way we can already just start a little bit more of a discussion and she can know I'm serious, because that's what it's all about. It's making a good use of your time, and when I say a good use of your time and managing leads, that means finding out if somebody is truly motivated to sell their property, if you guys can come to an agreement on price, and deciding if that person needs to be somebody that you're just following up with down the road, or if they're going to your, you know, your hot leads folder, somebody you need to be talking to every other day. And then the final thing we're gonna be doing today is uh, we got a couple other properties we're gonna be dropping into. Uh, I did set up a couple showings at some other two ones in the area just so I can get a good comparison of what we contracted versus uh, what's out there and what's getting under contract quick and see if ours is better, worse, same, equal. And it'll help me just come up with that uh, better ARV of the property that we got. We're gonna keep moving on with our day. I'll bring you guys along, give you guys some updates probably throughout the day of what's going on. We'll do an update as soon as we get over to this other house that we put under contract, show you a little bit of, of that one, and give you some initial thoughts after getting in there. So, stick around. All right, we're back, and I'm giving you guys a little update, and we're sitting at an 18th Ave Drive West, which is the one that uh, we did the rehab on that you guys got to watch. Uh, we are still under contract, which is great. Uh, we're outside of our inspection period, and uh, this one seems to be staying together. I wanted to come over and just take some pictures, also see if our roofers have gotten over here yet. We were told they were gonna be here yesterday or today, and of course I'm sitting here and nothing's happened, so gotta do a little follow-up call, keep our guys honest. Let's talk about that property that we just stopped at. So the property on 18th Street West, and this is a house, so I'm just making a house as I talk to you guys here. This, this is the uh, roof. 
Okay, so the property we just stopped at, the seller had a, a realtor that does a lot of work for him. Uh, meet me over at the property. He was able to get me in because it is tenant occupied. And it seems that the tenant is expecting to move out. So that's always nice when you have one of these situations where uh, you're not having to deal directly with an occupied property and, and have to go through the hassle of uh, vacating it yourself or, or giving that notice or taking possession and then doing an eviction. Uh, we did contract this property at $100,000 and it's a two bedroom, one bath block house, which I love that style. Uh, I only have one single family property that is a rental right now and that's exactly what it is. It's that two bedroom, one bath setup. Uh, there's something about only having to deal with one bathroom and the plumbing that comes along with one bathroom that's really nice. And also having a two bedroom, you don't expect to have more than probably two, maybe four people in the house. So you don't get that much wear and tear on a bathroom uh, with that number of people. When you start going into say a three bedroom, one bath house, or going into having two bathrooms, it just has a lot more uh, maintenance that you can end up having to deal with. So uh, I've started to realize that for myself, and the way I'm growing my rental portfolio, which I've, I've pretty much told myself I really wanna to stick to multifamily properties, uh, but I do like the idea that with the uh, two bedroom, one baths, uh, you've got that opportunity to create uh, some appreciation down the road. And um, at the end of the day, I'm not buying these properties for appreciation in mind, uh, but I'm buying them uh, based on cash flow and the purchase price. I, I don't want to have frame uh, properties, uh, everything in my portfolio except for one duplex that I have. Uh, but overall, the appointment went good. Uh, the guy that's in there right now taking care of the property, they say he's a general contractor. I, I haven't checked that. And usually when you hear that and you hear that that person takes care of the property themselves, you get a little worried to see what kind of repairs have been done to these properties and the overall condition, but I gotta say, uh, this guy definitely takes care of the property. Um, outside of needing to update some flooring and do a little bit of paint on the inside, the, the property's great. It, it's essentially a rent-ready property, so it's nice to know that at this price point, uh, I could probably throw somebody in this property and get about $1,200 a month in rent. So uh, even with a mortgage on that property at that purchase price, uh, that would be cash flowing probably 350, maybe 400 net a month. Uh, but as is, I'm pretty sure we could sell this house for around 135,000. So, so take out a little bit of those closing costs. We could probably turn a, a profit of about 25,000 over the course of two and a half, three months purchasing this property. We're only on day one or day two of a 10 day inspection period. Uh, my gut feeling is telling me is that we're gonna keep this property, but I'll keep you guys posted on that one. Uh, we're gonna go do a little more driving for dollars in the area since we're already up here in uh, Bradenton. And I just really realized I have a showing that was confirmed on a 2-1 that I wanted to go compare to this one and I got to get over there. So let's get over there.